So you want to get into law enforcement, but you're wondering if you should start in corrections. Let's discuss. Hey, before we get started, if you're new to the channel or if you're returning and you haven't claimed those gifts yet, make sure you claim them. The Getting Started Workshop is going to walk you through each stage of the hiring process so you know what you're in store for. You can prepare for them. Knowledge is power in this key. It's going to help you. It's going to give you tips, tricks to get through each stage. Plus, there's some hidden bonuses in there. Additionally, if you have something specific to you, to your hiring process, questions about your background, Polly, or any other thing that you can think of for you and you specifically, sign up for a free coaching call. I'd be glad to help you. Now, let's discuss getting started in corrections or using corrections as a stepping stone to law enforcement. That's a that's a misnomer, a myth almost. Law enforcement is a different division of criminal justice, or excuse me, corrections is a different division of criminal justice or law enforcement. You can be a corrections officer and, and fall under the law enforcement. What's the term I'm thinking for? Family. There we go. The law enforcement family. Corrections officers are law enforcement. They they may or may not be sworn officers in regards to carrying firearms or even having the authority to arrest and detain individuals. Some do, some don't, some state dependent, some federal dependent and where you're at with everything. But just know that it falls under the law enforcement family already. So it is no, it's a no brainer when I tell you, of course, being in corrections is going to help you get to, say, a patrol function of law enforcement, if that's what you're looking for. A lot of times, many people don't know this. Many states that are hiring for sheriff's deputies have to start in the jail. So if you're wondering how corrections work and, and everything like that, most county jails are run by sheriff's department, right? Most, there's, don't hold me to it, but most is run by sheriff's department. So if you get hired on with the sheriff's department, you may have to do a stent in the correction side before getting to the patrol side. Some sheriff's departments hire directly for patrol. Some sheriff's departments hire directly for corrections. Some sheriff's departments hire deputies that do both. And a lot of them hire deputies that do both. Maybe you have to do a year in corrections before you hit the street, or maybe you are on a rotation, three years corrections, three years patrol. And it all just varies. Now, the jail is a little bit different than say, a Department of Corrections for even a state or federal, because a jail is usually defined as a temporary holding, right? Not many people will reside in jail for an extended period of time. It's not what it's designed for. It's designed to house people who are arrested, get them processed, get them their court dates, make sure you identify them properly. And then if they make bond or they get released or they have an arraignment, the correction side deputies will handle that. And those correction side deputies are usually sworn officers, right? Even though they're working corrections. So keep that in mind, right? And even if it's a department, a sheriff's department that just does corrections in regards to that they're hiring two different positions, one for patrol, one for corrections, and then you can lateral to, to patrol if you wanted to later on down the line. Most of them are sworn deputies that, you know, you don't usually carry a firearm inside a, a correctional facility, right? That's usually a big no-no. But those deputies, if they're transporting an individual, say, to and from arraignment or to and from the court system, they're armed, right? They're in a sheriff's deputy vehicle, they're transporting or a transportation, and they're armed, right? They're armed, they have arrest and detainment authority. So keep that in mind. What a lot of the questions that I've been getting asked, and I think this would pertain more to you if you're looking at going this way, is, is what if I apply directly to a state or federal department of corrections, specifically to be a correctional officer? Does this help? Absolutely, hands down. It is a great way to gain experience and also get paid, right? It's it is a phenomenal way to do it. I tell people all the time, hey, you know, if you're looking for something to get hired on immediately, it's go, you know, go into security and then make some money and save up whether or not you want to do the self-sponsor through the academy or, or keep applying while you're working. But it is a great opportunity. The other thing is, is you still have to get through hiring process. You still have to do a background check. You may have to do a poly depending on your state or facility you're trying to work at. 
You may have to, you're going to have to probably do an interview, a board interview. You may even have to take a written exam and a physical exam. They, the standards for those are usually not as, as stringent as a kind of patrol or, or sworn position. If it's not a sworn position, once again, remember it's, it's a toss up here, but it's, the hiring process is a little bit quicker with corrections, right? So in law enforcement, you can expect somewhere between a two and six months for, for a sworn patrol position. Two, two is very fast, right? If you can get hired on in two months. When it comes to corrections, you an average is two months. You can get hired on corrections in, you know, in one to four months, right? Depending on, on what it is. So I want it, I want it down corrections. It's a great way to get your foot in the door. You can become a state employee, right? If it's for the state or a federal employee, depending on which way you want to go, you can get experience in dealing with law enforcement on the other side of the aisle where after everything's been said and done, where people are in, in a detention facility and they're, you know, there's a whole different dynamic and world going on in there. And then while you're trying to either save up money to self-sponsor or even while you're applying to to other departments for a patrol function. That's the way I would do it if I was starting in corrections. I would say, go corrections, make good money, get good benefits. And then from there, I'm not I'm not stressing so much about employment and financials because I have steady, reliable employment that meets my financial obligations while I'm, uh, while I'm applying to these, these departments. And I would just, if I have a family or a significant other, I would just tell them, hey, you know, while I'm applying... I have to use a lot of my my days off for for these things. So let's just for the next few months or whenever I'm going through the hiring process, let's just remember that because we're not going to be taking as many vacations. Just communicate, right? Communicate with your spouse or significant other. But it is definitely a good option. And like I said, it can be much quicker, not to mention they're going to run that background check on you. It's going to make the background check for your for your patrol position much easier because they're going to look, Hey, this person's already been vetted. He already has this level of clearance or, or what, what have you. And you're, you're ready to go right here. It's not, it's not so much as a lateral, but you're close to a lateral, right? You're already a state or local employee. And it really does have, have those benefits. The caveat though, is I do want to point out is, is while corrections can be a benefit and a stepping stone, it is hard to start at the bottom, right? Because you might be on a bad shift. You might have to work overnights, things along those lines, which you might have to do with law enforcement. But if you're using it as a stepping stone, it, it can be harder to, to keep that motivation. So just remember while you're doing it, you're gaining experience. One thing that I, I'm an avid person about when it comes to instructing is the fact that everything you do should be about learning and growing because that's just going to make you that much better as you go on. I've been talking too much. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be perfect, but I don't want you to get into corrections and then dissuade you from pursuing a patrol function if that's your goal. The other thing here is the fact that you may just want to go corrections. You might want to do 10 years in correction and you can promote and grow and follow that law enforcement capacity as well. It's it's whatever you want to do. I tend to see a lot more people want to get out on the street, have a patrol function and, and kind of engage their community members in as, as the ideal position that they're looking for. But I've met many individuals that say, Hey, corrections is what I want. And I'll look at patrol down the line. If, if I'm not fully satisfied, but I've been in corrections for a while and I enjoy it. I love it. So there's nothing wrong with that. I want to leave you with that one reminder though, is if you're applying to a sheriff's department and you say, hey, I want to be a sheriff's deputy. Just remember that you may have to start in some type of detention or corrections element. So you might get hired on. You might go through the police academy, learn all the patrol functions, everything like that, but then still have to spend a year or a few months in some type of jail or detention facility before you get and, and do well there before you get released out onto your patrol function. So just kind of keep that in mind. Plus, you'll have to go through your FTO, so you'll learn about every different aspect that probably that sheriff's department has. Keep that in mind. Those gifts down in the description, use them. Please use them. The Getting Started Workshop, once again, is going to walk you through every phase plus some hidden bonuses. And that one-on-one -on -one call with me, I'd be glad to sit down and help you through any phase 
that you have or any questions you have, I can answer them as best as I can and hopefully get you hired on quickly. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.